here we go for part two. Uh, question B, I'm connecting you with your textbook. Get to know your textbook. This one's a little bit different in the fact that it's written as a fraction, and you can see how the textbook handles these things from example four uh, there. So on with part C. Part C, tan is 0.77. Well, remember the steps. Diagram, calculator, think. And do the steps, draw the diagram, it helps, believe me, okay? Now, what's weird about this one is we don't have a coordinate, right? In the last one, we were able to figure out which quadrants the that theta would be in for principal solutions because, you know, x is cos and y is sine. x is cos and y is sine. But what's tan? Well, tan is the ratio of the two. Remember, it's sine over cos. That's, that's the deal. Right? Tan is sine over cos. And in fact, I could think of it as, well, the tan ratio is positive, so which quadrants will, will it be in? Which qu quadrants would I have a tan ratio that's positive? Well, there's one here, right? In here, the tan's positive, and I can call that right there my first solution. I'm going to call this theta 1. Well, where is the second solution then? Well, the second solution has to be in quadrant 3 because that's where else that the tan is positive. But notice that it has to have the same related acute angle. If I write this as the related acute angle here, I have to have an angle in the third quadrant with the same related acute angle. So that means this one has to be there, like that. And in fact, that's kind of a neat way to think of the tan, is that there they form a straight line because of the related acute angle is in the first, is in opposite quadrants here. So there's my second solution. Theta two. All right, dandy. So now how do I get them? Well, there's the diagram. I've set up my diagram. I te I see the two solutions. One is in quadrant one. One one is in quadrant three. The diagram's done. So now I have to use my calculator. Well, what do I mean? I mean I'm going to do the inverse tan. Pretend it's grade 10 all over again, uh, calculator in radian mode, of course, and I get 0 0.66. And then I think about what that means. What is my calculator telling me this is? Well, that's my answer, theta 1. So in fact, theta 1 is, because it's a related acute angle, is 0 0.66. But also, I know that my related acute angle, the Ra, is... 0.66. So that means this angle here is 0.66. Well, why is that so awesome? Well, it, it tells me what theta 2 is. Not straight off, but I can calculate it quickly. So my theta 2 is then pi, right? Because the straight line is pi plus 0.66. And some people try and kind of remember rules and stuff about, okay, it's just pi and I always subtract. I subtract, if the second solution is pi subtract. But notice it's not. If it's tangent, it's plus. And that's where the diagram co comes in. Diagram, calculator, think. And I got my two solutions between 0 and, and 2 pi are 0.66 about and 3.80. Okay, there's C done. Um, D I'm running out of room here. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull a cheatsy thing. Cheatsy. I'm gonna cheat. Of course, you could just use another piece of paper. It's hard for me to do that. Um, secant is two over the square root of three, and weird stuff's going on here. I've got bells going off because of the square root of three and the and two, and secant is a reciprocal function. How do I handle that? stuff is weird. Well, first of all, let's make our, our, our lives easier by just taking the reciprocal. Let's take the reciprocal of this, this thing, and that'll straighten out the secant stuff. So what's the reciprocal of secant? Well, that's cos theta, right? That's the reciprocals. And then the reciprocal of this, now I'm seeing this is, this is a special angle. 
right? And if I look up in my chart or I think of the, the triangle or whatever, from here I can figure out what the related acute angle is. I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I should still go to a uh, diagram, right? A diagram, um, now that I'm thinking in coses, I can think straight about this. So there's a couple ways to think of this. One would be where is the cos positive? And it's going to be in this quadrant and this quadrant. But I've also talked about, you know, thinking about the unit circle. Where is, because cos goes with x, where is the x coordinate equal to the square root of 3 over 2? Well, square root of 3 over 2, if I put that into a calculator, is about 8.866, which where is x? 0.866 is about there. And I'm looking for the spots where terminal arms cross the unit cir circle that give me an x coordinate of 0.866. And I don't care what the y coordinate is. And I don't care what the y coordinate is. But there are my two possible solutions one right there and one right there. Now, what's nice about this, once I get my diagram, and recognize this is a special angle. Somewhere I'll have my chart here. I look back at my chart. Where do I have cosine is the square root of 3 over 2? Ah, the related acute angle is pi over 6. So that means over here I can go back and say, whoops, I don't have to use my calculator. Diagram check. Yeah, I did my, my diagram. But here from the chart, I get my related acute angle is alpha equals pi over 6 and this is from my chart or from me memorizing the triangles or whatever that that first solution is pi over 6 right there's my first answer theta 1 is pi over 6 right what about my second solution well my second solution has a rotation angle right there this is going to be called theta 2 how do I get theta 2 well it's the related acute angle less than 2 pi. So I got 2 pi subtract pi over 6. Well, how do I do that? I don't want to clunk that into my calculator because this is an exact angle. This is perfect and beautiful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this and I'm going to deal with fractions. I need to get a common denominator. There's going to be 6s. I multiplied by 6 on the bottom, multiplied by 6 on the top. 11 pi subtract 1 pi is or sorry, 12 pi subtract 1 pi is 11 pi's over 6. That second angle is 11 pi over 6, and there are my two solutions. And uh, solution set equals 11 uh, pi, pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Notice I didn't use my calculator. These are exact. And that's awesome. We love uh, being exact in math class. All right, dandy. Last one, weird one, right? Um, the sine, remember, is the y-coordinate. And if I think of the unit circle, i draw a diagram, think of the unit circle, I get where is the y-coordinate equal to negative 1. Where is the y coordinate, the sine, equal to negative 1? Well, if this is the unit circle, it actually doesn't get that far out. It gets to, well, right there. Right There's my y coordinate equal equals negative Oh, that's the x coordinate equals negative 1. Oops. Almost blew that one. Where's the y coordinate negative 1? Y yeah, that's the x coordinate. Where's the y coordinate negative 1? There's the line y equals negative 1. And it's just that one spot. This is a special case where we actually only have one solution. There's theta there. And I should know that straight off from being able to do this exactly. That's pi over 2, 2 pi over 2. Theta equals 3 pi over 2. And that's the only solution between 0 and 2 pi. Right? Because that's the coordinate 0, negative 1. Sine is negative one that's it done now notice part of homework here and I'm hoping you'll zip through this fairly fairly quickly there's an FAQ but there's kind of an add-on homework and this is going to set us up for going uh, the next couple of things is graphing 
um, the sine y equals sine theta and y equals cos theta. There's a sheet, looks like that, and it's your job to fill it out. If you have trouble filling it out, uh, we'll deal with that in class. Okay, but this is the the last part of the homework is to also do this sheet. So have some fun with that.